Hi, if you're in the market for a dishwasher but you're not really sure what to go for then you're not on your own because there's a lot to choose from. So what I've done is I've come up with 10 things to consider before buying a dishwasher. So let's have a look. So although this is in no particular order, uh, number one on the list has to be the most important and that's the type of dishwasher that you're going for. So there, there are three main types. Uh, the first type is called freestanding and this is an example of a freestanding dishwasher. So you can see all of the front of the dishwasher and they're a lot easier to install. So with these ones they just slot into a space, normally either a 45 or 60 centimeter space. Uh, so have a good measure before you buy it. And the next type are the integrated dishwashers. Uh, we do a lot more of these now, they're so much more popular, especially in new houses. And the main advantage of a, an integrated dishwasher is that you've got your furniture door so if you if in your kitchen if you've got appliances in there then you can fully cover the appliance and it looks so much smarter than seeing the front of the dishwasher um, and within the integrated dishwashers there are two types there are this type which is called a fully integrated dishwasher that's where you can cover the whole of the dishwasher there are also semi integrated dishwashers and that's where you can see the control panel on the top uh, these are not as popular now and some manufacturers are starting to phase them out. So the main advantage of integrated dishwashers are that you get to cover the whole of the dishwasher and you don't have to see it. Uh, if you've got a really nice kitchen with nice cupboard doors then you get to hide it. Uh, the main downside, I suppose the main disadvantage of integrated dishwashers, whether it's semi or fully integrated, is that the installation cost, so if you're having to pay someone to install it, then it normally costs a bit more to install. So once you've got it nailed down, whether it's the fully integrated, semi-integrated or freestanding dishwasher, then you're on to number two on the list and that's the size of the dishwasher. Now what you need to do is just have a quick measure of the space and if it's a freestanding dishwasher, there are three types. So you've got the full size, that's like this, this is a standard 60 centimeter width. Uh, so things like the depth are pretty standard on dishwashers. They normally tend to be around 58 to 60 centimeters deep. The heights are all pretty standard at uh, around 85 centimetres, but the main things that vary are the width. So on this one, uh, this is the most popular size, which is 60 centimetres. So this is the next type of dishwasher. This is called a slimline dishwasher, and these measure 45 centimetres across. Uh, the main advantage is if you're in a small kitchen or utility, and if you are very limited for space, then this could be ideal for you. Uh, the main downside of this kind of dishwasher is they're not, even though they're smaller, they're not necessarily cheaper. Uh, you can find the freestanding equivalent in the 60 centimeter version might be the same price or even cheaper. And this is the third type of freestanding dishwasher. This is called a compact dishwasher. And these are ideal where you are very, very limited for space and it needs to sit on a worktop. Uh, now this kind of dishwasher, uh, I mean this is actually in our like work kitchen utility. Um, and within the space, we just wouldn't have space for a, a, even a slimline dishwasher, let alone a freestanding one. And because of the number of people that we work with, then we wouldn't really need a full-size dishwasher. So this kind of dishwasher is ideal. Uh, the main advantage of this kind of dishwasher is that if you are extremely limited for space, or say if there's one person in the household, then this could be ideal. Uh, what you, the main downside is that, it, again, like the slimline dishwashers, Despite the size of them, they are normally more expensive. So there are not many manufacturers that make these now, but once you do find them, then you will find that the price of these are quite a bit more than a standard dishwasher. And again, within the integrated dishwashers, you have got the option for a full size or slim line. Uh, I've only got an example of a full size one here, which is the 60 centimeter ones. Uh, you do tend to find that the within the slim line ones, you can only get them in the fully integrated, as far as I know, there are not any semi-integrated slimline dishwashers because that on the whole is quite a declining market now. Now number three on the list is does it have a display on the front? Uh, now when this is plugged in, I'll be honest this isn't plugged in at the moment, this particular one, then it will actually show you the time remaining on the program. Now that's a really useful feature uh, and clearly on any freestanding dishwasher then you can see that. Um, it's normally something I do recommend for people to look out for. Uh, quite a few of the cheap dishwashers, they don't have a full display on it that shows you the time remaining. It just has like a countdown indicator, um, which to be fair is not that useful. 
uh, but I'd normally recommend trying to go for one with a proper display. And on the integrated dishwashers, when you open the door, uh, quite a few of them do have a display just in the middle here. So if I turn that on, then as you can see it shows you the time remaining within the program. So some of the Eagle Eye viewers, and I suppose a lot of people will be saying, well, hang on, when the dishwasher's working, then you can't see it. You can't see what's going on. So some manufacturers have thought about this. Clearly, if you do go for a semi-integrated, then that solves the problem because you still have the display on the front. Uh, but some brands have gone a step further. So between Bosch, Neff and Siemens, because they're all the same company, uh, we do loads of these kind of dishwashers. Um, and what they've done is they've got some technology. Uh, the first one is called InfoLight. And what this means is that once you've selected the program that you want, then press start. And when you shut the door, you might be able to see at the bottom right here, there's a little LED light. So that gives you an indicator as to what's happening during the program. And then the light will go out towards the end of the program when it's finished. So that's all very well and good having a little LED light at the bottom giving you an indicator, but it doesn't give you the full information for the dishwasher. So what they've also done is come up with something called time light. And when you set the program on another dishwasher, so this is a feature which is on the slightly higher end models, then the bottom right here, hopefully you can see this, uh, this is giving you a good indicator as to what's happening during the wash. Now this feature on its own, once we show people, goes down really well. So just give you an example of a dishwasher without a display on the front. So you see it's, uh, there's not a lot to it. You've just got the program dial where you select the temperatures and things. You have got the time delay option, but there's no display showing you the, the time remaining in the program. Now, personally, I'm not really a fan of this because I do like to know how long things are gonna take. So that's my number three on the list. Have a look out for a model with a display. So number four on the list is how do you want to wash the cutlery? Now you've got a couple of options. This is a standard cutlery basket, and this kind of design has been around for quite a few years now. Um, over recent years, more and more manufacturers are going towards this. This is a tray on the top, and the main advantage is that you can actually separate all of the cutlery so that the washing performance should be a lot better having this kind of design compared to the standard cutlery basket. Because what you'll find is uh, people overload this kind of basket uh, I know over the years we have been guilty ourselves. We try and get the kids to load the dishwasher and all they do is they put everything face down and if it's dirty then the washing performance isn't quite as good as if you've got this kind of design. Now although it does have a huge advantage and you will normally find that this, these are on the larger place setting dishwashers uh, so sometimes they'll go up from a 13 to a 14 place setting because what, you, what you'll find is that by putting the cutlery up here, it frees space up down at the bottom. So that's how they go from a 13 to a 14 place setting. Um, the main, so that's the main advantage. The main disadvantage, and I will be honest with you, is that you can limit the height that you can get in the top basket. So if you have got, say, very tall glasses or cups that you put in here, then just have a look out uh, to see some of, the, some of the heights of these before you buy because what you could find is if you have got say very tall wine glasses that it could hit the bottom at the underside of the cutlery tray. So that's number four on the list, the type of cutlery storage. Now number five on the list, and for some people it might be a quite high priority, is the running cost of the appliance. Uh, each dishwasher comes with this thing, it's called a, an energy label, and what you'll find is it's a good indicator as to how energy efficient it is compared to another one. So I'll just show you two examples here. So this is a popular Siemens one. This is what I've been showing you here. This is one we do really well with. And this is a bit more of a basic Bosch model. So as you can see, first of all, the energy performance on the Siemens is a bit better. It goes from an A plus to an A double plus. Also something to bear in mind is the water consumption. So you've got around 2,600 litres compared to 3,300 litres per annum on the Bosch. Now for some people, if you're on a water meter and if you're using it a lot, say if you're using it once, possibly twice a day, which some people are, then those kind of figures can make a big difference to the running cost of the appliance. And what you'll find is sometimes by paying a bit extra, say going up to the Siemens, can pay dividends in the long run. So have a look at the running cost of the appliance 
Uh, most manufacturers will have all the information on the website. I know we have quite a lot on ours as well. So at number six is does the dishwasher have an adjustable top basket? And what I mean by that is this is a fairly standard dishwasher and what, what you normally like to do is you have the ability to adjust the height of the top basket. And the main reason for that is you might have very tall glasses uh, in the top or if you put saucepans in the top then you might want to lower the height of this. And on this kind of dishwasher you'll see you've got two sets of wheels and what you do is you actually take the, you actually pull this out, so I will show you this, so you take that out and you relocate it on the bottom set of wheels and that kind of thing is, is useful uh, but you imagine doing that when it's full, when you've got cups and everything in the top then it gets very heavy. So, And that's why a lot of manufacturers have come up with this kind of design, so you've got adjustable racks but rather than having to take it out and relocate the wheels, like on the first one I just showed you, then you've got this kind of design and all you do is you just press the handle in and then it lowers down. So you press it and lowers the whole of the basket down. Now you don't have to do both sides, so if you, if you needed it, um, say if you had some tall items in the bottom, if you had a big saucepan one side, um, and if you just wanted to raise one side up, then you've got that option. So this kind of thing we show people, and quite a few people are not aware of it, uh, but I always think it's so much easier than having to relocate it on the wheels like I just showed you. Um, there are different positions, so several manufacturers will, rather than just one other position, then you've got two, so that's it. So you've got one and then two, so really, really flexible. So that's something I definitely look out for, the adjustable racks on the dishwasher. I suppose just really to add to that, so as well as having the ability to move the top basket, um, just have a look out for some of these. Um, what you'll find is that these are normally fixed. So in something like a Neff or a Bosch dishwasher, then the light gray ones mean they're fixed. And when it's dark gray, then you can actually fold these down. Now this has a, a again, a huge advantage. So at the bottom here, all of these are dark grey, so that means we've got the ability to fold them all down. And it makes life so much easier. So it, again, if you have got a big saucepan one side, I've completely flattened that. So it just, it means the washing performance can be a lot better uh, because the item could be sitting a bit lower. It's got a nice flat surface to go on. And the same on this side. So if I wanted to fold these down, then you've got the option to do it. So number seven on the list is the noise of the dishwasher. It's something that a lot of people don't really consider, uh, but it's something I do try to point out to people, especially if you use things like Economy 7, where you're using the dishwasher overnight, using the time delay facility, then have a look at the noise level of the dishwasher. Uh, a lot of people are in, say, open apartments, so there's nothing worse than having the dishwasher whir in a way that's quite noisy while you're trying to watch TV. So the noise level, and again, it is on the energy label, so this is just an example of a, a standard dishwasher. So that's at 50 decibels. Now for us people, that doesn't really mean a lot, uh, but try and go for a dishwasher that where the noise level is well into the 40s. Uh, there are plenty of them around now. Uh, this is a, another one that we do. This is a Grundy dishwasher. And this one here is 42 decibels. So for a lot of people, it doesn't mean a lot, but as you go from 42 to 50, that makes a huge difference. Now number eight, and I know for a lot of people it's pretty obvious, but it's the colour of the dishwasher. So clearly if you're going for an integrated one, then that's decided by the colour of the door that you're putting on. So that's sort of out of the equation. Uh, but for a freestanding dishwasher, there are quite a few colours available. The most popular by far is white. You have got other options like stainless steel, silver, black. Um, some manufacturers do other uh, slightly different colours. The only thing I tend to mention is just think about the colour scheme within the kitchen. Uh, some people go for, say, a black dishwasher, and then what they try to do in a couple of years' time is try and match up, say, with a black washing machine. And you can find if you're going between different manufacturers, then the, the shade of black might not quite be the same. Sometimes it might be a, a matte black from one manufacturer and a gloss black from another manufacturer. And it, it, to be fair, it doesn't look that great in the end. So try and, I suppose, stick with the same brand. That can really help. 
uh, but also just think about not necessarily now but try and think what you're doing in say two three four years time as a color scheme in your kitchen so at number nine would be the type of programs that are on the dishwasher uh, this covers such a huge area because each manufacturer will vary and all I'd recommend is just have a look to see the programs that are on there and that the programs on there are suitable for your needs so you will find a lot of dishwashers have programs like this where you've got the high temperature which is a 70 degree wash um, auto programs where it will actually detect the temperature required for you depending on how dirty everything is inside eco programs are becoming fairly standard these are slightly longer washers but they are more energy efficient you have got other programs like the uh, dedicated glasses program and you've got quick wash programs so we can do a full load in around an hour and some manufacturers can even be quicker than that so that, that's ideal if you're in a hurry but don't forget that the washing performance on some of the quick programs are not as good as some of the eco programs other features uh, you've got things like time delay so that's ideal if you want to delay the start of the dishwasher so if you've got things like economy 7 where you've got cheap electricity during the night then that's a great option um, things like these programs at the end so you've got things like extra dry um, you've got a reduced time option so some of these programs you can actually speed up um, also this is called machine care so this is again this is becoming fairly standard on a lot of the sort of better dishwashers this just enables the machine to be cleaned but there are I mean this is just an example of a, a popular dishwasher that we sell uh, there are so many more programs available on the market um, more dishwashers are becoming smart enabled so you have the option to control it from your mobile phone or tablet uh, this is something that some people are catching on to um, that you do have the option to set the program and to start it when you're out but just have a look to check the programs and functions that it offers before you buy the machine because there's nothing worse than buying it then realizing it doesn't have a feature that you really wanted on it now number 10 and for a lot of people it's quite a high consideration it's the cost of the appliance uh, clearly the cost of appliances vary a huge amount uh, you can get dishwashers from say around 150 to 200 pound at the cheaper end of the market and they can go all the way up to well over a thousand pounds now clearly as you go up through the range then the washing performance should be better also they will be quieter uh, things like the running costs will be less as you go up through the range and you'll have a lot more functionality and options within the dishwasher uh, for some people they might not need to go that high in the range so something mid-range around three to four hundred pound would do and that's really the mass market where a lot of manufacturers are aiming but I just recommend have a look through all the features and benefits first so have a look at the programs check to see if you need the things like the adjustable baskets uh, because what you can find is that sometimes by paying a little bit more uh, it can really benefit you and I did mention about the uh, the running cost earlier that uh, if you go for something that is slightly better that costs you a lot less to run then long term that could be better as well something I haven't really mentioned is warranties uh, on a lot of dishwashers they come with a one year two year or five year guarantee and again that's normally go up through the range so that's something else to consider so I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the 10 things to consider before buying a dishwasher. I know there are probably things I've missed and if you think I have missed something then just pop it in the comments below because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Uh, with dishwashers there are a lot of things to talk about but hopefully those 10 things are you know good to give you a good idea as to at least to what, what to look out for. What I normally ask is please subscribe to my channel so click subscribe give us a thumbs up on the video as well. And again, if you have got any comments, whether it's good or bad about the video, or if you've got any questions about dishwashers, if you're considering buying one, if you've got a question on one, then pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.